I've had, if we counted them, probably seven bad D'Addario strings in 30 years. The reason we only stock D'Addario strings is because D'Addario strings are perfect. It's nice to be able to depend on something. Jared! John! Hey, what are you doing? Hey, good to see you, buddy. What's up, man? What uh, are you doing down here? Uh, shooting rundown with Kelly's Heroes. I'm shooting rundown with Kelly's Heroes, dude. Are you serious? Oh, you're doing... Yeah, oh, Bill. Oh, okay. Well, I'm doing uh, I'm doing Luke and Joe. Do we get double booked? We yeah, got double just, booked. You know what? Perfect. We'll do them together. Yeah? All film musicians, you get the drummer. Very, very good. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Two for one. All right, yeah, two for one. And if you don't know who Luke McQuarrie is, you're about to find out. Not only is he one of the best guitar players in the country right now, he's a hell of a showman. If you all put your hands together for Luke, come on, give it to him. John Bolger with Premier Guitar. We're at Robert's Western World in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm with Kelly's Heroes. So you guys, I've seen you playing down here for years on and off, and Joe, particularly you, uh -huh. and uh, Luke, a little later with you, because you're, you're younger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you both got started with um, playing here with Don Kelly, is that's that right? That's right, yeah. yeah. And before that, I saw you with the Dempseys. Right. Yeah, right. great band out of Memphis. And Luke, you had the uh, the incredibly, I guess, scary position of, of being in Don Kelly's band after, God, J.D. Simo, uh, Brent Mason. Who else was in that yeah, band man. before you? Yeah, but there was Guthrie, Guthrie yeah. Trapp, Daniel yeah, Donato. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very yeah. intimidating for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Man, all of them. And when you got that gig, how old were you? I was, uh, I was 17. God. 17, yeah. 17. I remember that. I remember seeing this kid down here and thinking, oh my God, who is this kid? <laughs> oh man, I was just, just happy to be there, you know, just very lucky, very, well, very honored to be here. Well, it, it, it's, uh, I love your playing and I love the fact you stepped into this high pressure gig and just nailed it. Uh, okay, let's talk a little bit about gear that's being Premier Guitar. Let's start over here. So, Luke, what what you have the most minimal rig I've seen, uh, I've seen. So what, tell me about the whole enchilada. Yeah, man, so this is my custom shop Fender Telecaster. It's a thin line. The only thing different on it is the pick guard and the, and the knob switch. I got that different too. I wanted like a, a regular tele switch, you know? Yeah. And uh, I got a little Brent Mason mini humbucker here. Sure. This is a Lindy Fralin Blue Special in the back. 
a little SD1. It was my dad's pedal. It's been <laughs> modded, <laughs> modded by my buddy Scotty Huffman up in Kentucky. And uh, then I got this Blackface Deluxe Reverb that my dad gave me. Um, what do you know? What year that uh, Deluxe is? I think it's a '65. I'm pretty sure. Really? Yeah, he just he just redone the grill, but uh, yeah, I think it's a '65. I put a Celestion Vintage 30 in it, and that's about it, man. Yeah. yeah. Reverb switch. Yeah, that's great, and I, and I love the fact that it's your dad's old pedal and amp. Yeah, I do yeah, too, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've tried other stuff, but I always come back to my dad's stuff. It seems. Yeah, so cool. Okay, and Joe, tell me about your rig. I, I've. Uh, <laughs> what do you well, got going on here? What's there to tell? Uh, yeah. No, uh, this is a uh, 2004, 2004 Engelhart Swingmaster. And it's patterned after the old K Swing Masters from back in the day. Back, uh, K was around for about 30, 40 years, and uh, they sold all their patterns to Engelhart in 69. So now Engelhart's making these patterns. I actually, I don't even think they're making them anymore, but this is a 2004, so I've had it 20 years. And God, it's. You uh, put some miles yeah, on it that. Was, it was brand Thanks. new when I got it. And um, uh, these are uh, gut strings. So I got a G, D, and A plain gut, yeah. which helps with the slapping thing, you know, sure. a little less tension. Uh, a wrapped E string, which is also gut, but it's uh, wrapped in, in metal. And then uh, a Barbera bridge, which um, if you turn this on here, you can hear it's a very sensitive bridge, uh, basically two two pickups per string. So if I just tap on the bridge, you can really hear it through the... Wow. Yeah, so if you're a bower, you can get the side-to-side -side motion. And then if you're... Yeah, so it's, yeah. A, it's, a, great, it's a great pickup and... Uh, a lot of the Nashville guys are using these. Uh, Dave Rowe was the guy that kind of hipped everybody to, right. you know, um, about 20 years ago. I saw him playing in this very in room. This room, right. And he was playing a little 210 carbon, and, and he was just killing the room. And I, I said, how are you getting that sound? And he said, man, you got to get yourself a Barbera. And you basically what you do is you you trace your bridge and you send it to this guy, Rich Barbera in Staten Island, New York, and he builds you a whole new bridge and you fit it to your feet. And uh, anyway, I, I love it. I have a couple of them. I also have a, a Underwood on here as a backup just in case anything goes wrong. And uh, and I'm just straight into the amp. Yeah, and this is a backline amp. Yes, Yeah. yes, and it's a great backline amp. I was using PV for years, which yeah. which was, Roberts Roberts had a PV deal. They had a PV 410, yeah. uh, and uh, I also had a PV Pro 500 head. And recently we, we switched over to this. I was a little skeptical, yeah. but I plugged in, yeah. and it gets both the... Uh, the, fin the finger sounds great, you know, like I had there, and then the slap sound. And, the, you know, a, a, by itself, the slap is, it, it, it's pretty harsh, but yeah. cut, cutting through a drum set and a Telecaster, it's, it's perfect. So. Oh, man, and you are so percussive when you're playing. What's that? Okay, so <clears throat> these shifts are four-hour shifts. Yeah. And you're just blowing and going four hours straight. Yeah. And how many nights a week do you generally... Play. So we're here four nights a week. We do Wednesday through Saturday, 6.30 to 10, and that's Don Kelly's old shifts. Yeah. And um, basically we down beats at 6.30. We play for about an hour, do a quick tip jug pass, um, try to keep it, you know, under five minutes. Yeah. Uh, these guys stay on the stage and we're back at it again another 50 minutes and, and do that thing, pass the tip jug four times a night and, and uh, yeah, play for three and a half hours. How do you, I mean, that is just so physical the way you play. <laughs> what I mean, do your hands just ever just give out after a well after a rough week? Yeah, to be honest with you, it's harder when you take breaks. So if 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 I have like a three or four days off and yeah. then I come back to this, then right. it's just like um, it's like trying to run uphill. Right. So so the fact that we're playing every night and Luke can attest to this, and so can Billy, our drummer. That you know your chops stay in better shape if you're if you're doing it all the time. Sure. And so, um, so yeah, I do have my uh, let's see, I have my uh, Vaseline intensive care around here somewhere <laughs> for my hands. So okay, this time of year when it gets dry, I I I put that on there, make sure nothing dries out. Right. And um, you know, yeah, just uh, gut strings help that. And uh, you know, there's little tricks of the trade that definitely help you keep, you know, keep from falling apart, like you said. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah it's it's just. There's a physical toll from that. Yeah. And just going that hard. For sure. Yeah. Uh, and years. <laughs> Luke and, yeah, how about you, man? Do you you're just blowing all night long. Your hands your hands uh mess with you at all? I hurt a little bit, yeah, but not not too bad, man. No, yeah. I got this big neck, but no. 
nothing like what he's doing over there. I've seen his fingers busting open before. Yeah, so, right. Yeah, I've yeah. seen some painful things out of him. Yeah, right, right. Hey, y'all, I'm John Bollinger with Premier Guitar. So our rig rundowns for a long time now have been sponsored by D'Addario. And I'm thrilled to be using the D'Addario Expand pedal board. I've got this little guy that fits in my gig bag. And like many of you, I'm changing pedals all the time. I love having a board that can shrink as I'm shrinking my board or expand as I'm expanding it. And that's why I love the Expand pedal board. Their patented telescoping technology lets me instantly change the size of my pedals playground. It also features a unique cable management system and comes fitted with loops of Velcro, keeping everything neat and easy to swap. The two Expand versions comes with either one or two rows, depending on your needs. So a big thanks to D'Addario. Now, let's get back to more rig rundowns. Okay, so tell me a little bit about were you always a thumb pick player or did you is that yeah the... yeah i started i started actually with one of these but i started with the yellow one this is a fred kelly but i, I start now i'm using the orange one uh -huh. i was using the little blue dunlops but I, they were a little bit long so i switched to these i'm really liking them but yeah. i just started using because i couldn't hold a pick you know <laughs> yeah, <laughs> i yeah. just i didn't know how i guess I don't know. <laughs> hillbilly <laughs> <laughs> that's great that's that's great. So look, you're you're running with just the bare minimum, Tele Overdrive, which you don't even have on all the time. You, do you are you using the drive as just kind of a boost because you don't get super dirty? It's a very ampy, natural. Sound. Yeah, yeah. So I I'll swap the knob, the drive. I'll turn the drive up and down a little bit, depending on the song. If it's more rocky, you know, or yeah. something. And yeah, usually it's for the solos and stuff. I don't really keep it on for. For rhythm at all i just i just step on it for the solos you know sometimes i'll crank it and get it you know for like ghost riders and stuff it'll be you know a lot of overdrive but usually it is kind of just a good crunch you know yeah take me through a little bit of your tones just just your your take me through the whole enchilada everything you'd use from your clean to your dirty to your the whole yeah thing. okay well a lot of it, I, I use my tone and volume knobs a lot, you know, so yeah, you usually were... I'll start pretty loud, you know. Yeah. Like... And then, you know. Rhythm. I do like just the, you know, dry. It sounds really yeah. Wow. And then um, this is really good for. Um, you know the real pretty stuff. Kind of the bassier stuff, you know, and yeah, for these, like, uh, it's really good in a trio to have that extra meat, you know, oh, right for the for the, for the high notes, anyway. And and then for this one, I find like I'll roll the tone knob down, Yeah, man, that's about it, you know. You know what I love about I love about your playing. I mean, it's so smooth and fluid, and God, you get so much tonal variety out of this just out of your guitar, man. Thank you, man. Just that's a, a big compliment coming oh, from you. Man, appreciate you're a, that. You're a telly master. So, so uh, who influenced you the most? I mean, like, like obviously, do you spend a lot of time down here, like watching? Don Kelly's band prior to getting this? Yeah, I'd probably say Don. Honestly, yeah. uh, out of the most, I would say Don's probably influenced me the most. Oh, no kidding? Yeah, I'd say I, I literally talk like him <laughs> at this point. You know, there's there's times I catch myself saying things and I'm like, 
man, sure. <laughs> this is not right. Yeah. You know, Joe tells me I'm too old sometimes. <laughs> but, you know, as far as guitar, my dad and Stevie Ray Vaughan. Oh, yeah. You know, and when I was 11, he brought me here to see JD, you know, oh, and right. that just, that changed everything, you know. So it was like this spot for me was like, I remember standing right over there and just being like, that's what I want to do, you yeah. know. And I remember thinking, I was just telling my my girl this <laughs> the other day. I said I remember standing in Kentucky out in my little drive and and remembering like, oh yeah, if I do this, like I can use my mind. You know what I mean? Like I'm not because my dad had quit at the time. He was like working construction. And I remember uh -huh. thinking at that time like I was going yeah. with him too. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I'm like, man, if I do this, like this is using your mind. You know, it's right. a lot. It's a lot easier sometimes. Oh yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Granted, you can be a little lazy with it. Well, and look at look at look at Don Kelly. I mean, God, man, he he, that guy has rocked forever. I mean, he's now he's in Florida. Is that correct? He is. Yeah, he started his band in um, I, I think around '81 out right. of the Stagecoach Lounge, and and he he was there about ten years and bounced around for a few years before he got here in '97. Yeah, and he played his last gig here was. Uh, uh, as a Don Kelly band was March 14th, 2020. And we all know that was the, yeah. the shutdown. But anyway, he's come <laughs> he's back. Like, I'm he's, out. He, I'm yeah. out. I'm out. He's come back a couple times to play with us since. Yeah. We're trying to make it more of a regular thing where he pops in every couple months and, and plays a weekend with us. And so, yeah, so we, it took him three years to kind of, to get back, but yeah. uh, uh, it did for a lot of people. So. Right. Yeah. Right. So in between your regular gig here, what are you guys doing? I mean, I have I, like, we've worked together and I, I assume you're, you're uh you've always got people calling you, I imagine. Oh man, I don't know. I I mostly just do this, you know, it keeps me happy and yeah. I'm always open to a call though, that's for sure. You know, <laughs> yeah. For for a recording yeah. session, you that's know. That's right. <laughs> but, yeah, the battle cry is yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what I love about this gig, you know, this bar, it's it's like real country music. And right. and up and down this street, it's kind of amazing how how you hear don't stop leaving and, and you know, zombie and all this stuff. But like here, it is always the real deal. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, we can thank Jason Lee Jones for right. buying this place back in the late 90s and wanting to, you know, keep some sort of tradition about this town. And I, I hear it all the time. Customers come in here. They're like, man, we, where do we go after after this place? And I'm like. And I hate to tell them, I'm like, you might as well just stay here because, you know, there's just, unfortunately, there's not a lot of options anymore up and yeah. down this street. This place, it, you know, for 16 hours a day, I mean, from, you know, 10 in the morning to 2 in the morning, every band that hits this stage is playing old school country music. Right. And it's, a, and it's played by a bunch of people that love it and that want to keep it going and that moved to Nashville because they thought, that, you know, a lot of people have been here longer than I have and they, you know, and then there's some people that have just moved here in the last five years that thought there was going to be a lot more country music. Yeah. And so, but that's, Roberts is flying that flag and uh, it, it's a totally. beautiful thing for sure to be a part of it. Yeah, it's 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 almost like, God, it's like walking down Beale Street, you never hear jazz, you know, or, or walking down in, in uh, Bourbon Street. Bourbon right, Street, right. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, New Orleans, walking down yeah. Bourbon Street, you never hear jazz. You hear that same like kind of rock playlist that you hear up and down this street. Yeah, for sure. And you have to like really seek it out. And this is kind of the same thing here. And it's so great to hear you guys doing this authentic, just nailing it, country music, man. I love it. In fact, hey, let's get Billy back up and have you guys send us out. Sounds good. Come on, Billy. <laughs> Come join the fun. <laughs> Thank you. 
Want more gear geekery fun? Hit the link below and that will take you to our sister channel, Drum Rundown. And you can see what Bill back there on the skins is playing. I've used the stereo strings myself for at least 30 years, if not more. Everybody who comes in here, with very, very few exceptions, plays the stereo strings. And they didn't get there because of any reason except dependability and tone. 